Welcome back to What Are Nibs with General Disturbance. This is the M53 M55. It's the Tier 9 American SPG. And this one's located on the south spawn of Cliff under the command of Bender Bender. Now you can see it's got these marvelous skin produced by Sir Rusty. It's got our logo on the side and it says US Army on the front. And that's because this has got the eight inch howitzer. And the US Army M55s were, well, they were all 8 inch, eight inch armed. It was the M53 that had the 155mm gun. And it looks like Fender Bender is going to take it. Oh, he's not going to take it into a bush or anything. Just setting himself up. That's it, he's right at the back of the map. And he's now looking for targets. Just wanted to get himself comfortable, I'm sure. Okay, and there's his first customers. Now, the one thing, great thing about the M55 and the M53, for that matter, is they were built with a turret that could swivel. So it meant that the RT had a very wide arc. Round out on the Wizzy. Bit, bit behind him. Bit behind. Still damaged him. You can see he's lost some hit points. It's a, it's a difficult judge sometimes, uh, working out exactly when you want to actually fire the round. But um, it, if you can get it bang on target, it'll do up to 1,050 alpha, as long as it penetrates the target. Now that light 432 is the sort of, got the sort of light armor that this shell could penetrate. Round out. Will he get a kill? Well, he got a splash. 274 hit points and I think he's decided to get into one of the bushes or move to cover because that light piece 32 or light 32 or tree two rub might be able to see him and he also wants to get a better angle on some of these tanks as they try to make their way through the pass now the reload time is fairly long uh, it's at least I think 42 seconds without any rammer or crew skills and he hit somebody there i think it was the t30 or the type 4 heavy the shell disappeared without an explosion so he knows he hit some unseen tank and he's trying to climb up the wall there and i don't think that's going to work but he's looking for a target to hit and i think he's found one Oh, we see 114. In fact, it's the same one he fired at with his first shot. Just dialing in. Almost ready to go. He's ready. He's marked his target. Rounds out. Looks good. Direct hit. 401 hit points right on the front of the vehicle. Unfortunately, we see 114 got a shot into that 50 TP. Did a huge amount of damage to him. But he's out of the game, and it looks to me like Fender Bender's managed to pick up all the extra hit points and by way of stun assist. And that's because the 18 character produces a lot of stun. Almost ready to go. Rounds out Type 4 Heavy. Direct hit. Not only that, but he actually hit a Samur SM who was parked alongside. So two stuns for the count of one. I do like it when you get two enemy tanks sitting close to each other. They all get hit at the same time. It means double bubble. I know that's an English term, but uh, I think sure you must understand that. Yes, you're going to get two for. You're going to get two tanks for one shot. Ooh, E75 just got dirt by the Type 4. Another double there. Yep, he actually stunned three tanks, but he hit the Type 4, who's now been killed. It's taken out by the T-30 on our team. Right, well, we're aiming for a T-30, but it's the enemy one this time. Now, the thing is, the T-30 is actually slightly smaller. Oh, and that was T-30 on T-30 action. I was going to say T-30 would be more difficult to hit, but now he's dead. Round out on the Samoa. And he gets double again. He hit the Samur before 74 and he stunned the IS-3 behind him as well. 
So Fenderbend is doing very well because he's clocking up a lot of stun at this moment, but he's not getting stun assist though, that's the problem. Not as much as I think he would like. That E75 is wearing the ground out underneath its tracks. And we've got a Type 59. He's come up to the edge there. He's poking over the edge. Now that would make a ripe target if he can get the shell on, on him. Waiting for him to go up to that bush again. Oh, he's moved. There he is. Work out where he's headed. Oh, he's stationary. He stayed still. Round out. Direct hit wipes him out. 395 hit points from a kill. He's now up to 2.2k of damage. But unfortunately, the team are two tanks down on the enemy. But I don't think they have to worry about it too much because at the moment, you see, um, they still have the tank destroyers defending from grid square k4 k5 rather uh, this path seems to be impenetrable to the enemy that e75 is stopping anybody coming around the corner oh he bounced that round off the wreck the splash of hitting the type 4 wreck damaged the is3 he picked up 230 hit points to splash off that one okay got an fp4202 over by the cliff edge. Right, just zooming in a little to see where the target is. Oh, lost sight of it. He's very much relying on the sighting coming from the Striv and the AMX CDA 105. He's got no shots here because whilst the IS-3 is sitting around the corner in Defilade, we can't do anything about that. But he can do some counter-battery. And I think that's what he's intended to do now. Now, it's easier to do counter battery if you go to the overhead view, because then it becomes dead easy to pinpoint the position. But if you... Oh, there's the enemy RT! He's sitting behind that bush. And that would have certainly given him a headache. It must have done a lot of damage to him. I've been doing a lot of counter battery just recently, and I can tell you it's not nice. To the, for the enemy, if they suddenly get hit with a huge shell, it frustrates their game. Because they know that somebody out there trying to kill them, and it forces them to keep moving, upsets their rhythm. Now, I could hear some wall going knocking down there, so I think he's moved. waiting for the tracer it becomes much easier to watch for the tracer when you're in overhead I can tell you I think they call it uh, strategic view or God's eye view oh closer target and from this position it's a bit difficult to get a shot on target unless we're fully dialed in on the IS-3 that's out well he got a hit but it wasn't a huge amount it was enough to kill the IS-3, though. Okay, standard beans up on top of the hill. CDA's moving up there. The scores have equalised now, so we are doing a bit better. There's two tanks locked up in that little corner. An IS-3 and the other one's a Type 34. Or a T-34-3 I should say. And he's picked up some more stun assist. Just the IS-3 on that corner and Wizzy 1201 FT over there. Object 430 is going for it. It's going to take out the IS-3 I think. Going for the Wizzy 120 to deter him from attacking our 430. Ready? Round out. A little bit late. But he's still got some splash. 316. 
Unfortunately, it's starting to be up on top of the hill, killed our CDA. And the Wizzy120 has been killed by our T30. Well, Fender Bender's decided to uh, pull up his man pants and he's going to go after that IS-3 himself with a shotgun. Here we go. I do this myself so I know. You think to yourself, yeah, no problem, I can handle this. And I have, I've just recently, I've been doing a lot of it. You're putting the, the word P into propelled. You're actually getting out there and moving forward and it shocks the hell out of some of your teammates. They see an RT going for the enemy face to face. Oh, and there's the standard B. Now Fender Bender's loaded, but here he goes, gonna have to do a shotgun. Oh no, that didn't work. You have to put your reticule over the target before it'll actually uh, be ready to shoot. And that was very, very hasty on the snapshot. Unfortunately, it didn't work. But 3,000 hit points of damage, at least that's what's been recorded so far. There might be more. In fact, I'm sure there are more. Because remember, he did hit some blind shots. Well, the 430 and T30 are going to go after that uh, standard B now. It'd be a good idea if they split up, but the, the 430's got very low on hit points. It'd be a very bad mistake for the standard B to take a shot at the uh, T30. Even though he's got the bigger gun, he's got the 155mm. And we're switching now to the 430. He's moving up on the standard B. Here we go. So it looks like the 430 is going to try and entice the standard B out. And then the T30 will fry him with that 155mm gun. There he is, over there, far side. We've been spotted. And it looks like T30 might have taken a round. I think that was his track. He's trying to take a shot. Missed it. T30 is the sign of close. Probably the best thing to do at this stage of the game. 430 is a bit cautious because he's got so low on hit points. The thing is, oh, and 430 was lost, but T30 made sure he's got the alpha damage to do it. So, victory. Let's have a look at the end of battle stats. And it's an ace tanker for Fender Bender in the M53, M55. He also picked up a bruise medal for getting at least five critical hits. He got 18. A gauze medal for doing more damage than 10 times the hit points for his own vehicle. And a confederate medal for hitting more of the enemy than anyone else in his team. At least six tanks subsequently taken out by other teammates. And a win eight for the game, 5,739, which is Super Unicum and some more. So let's have a look at the team score. He didn't get the highest damage. That went to the T30. He got 5,247 hit points of damage. He picked up a high caliber on Top Gun for getting six kills. Uh, then came second in place, 4,518. So he only said $3,000, I think, on the, uh, on the uh, end of battle results. But he got 4,500 in total. And, of course, that Gauss Melton Confederate and two kills. And the E-75 managed to get a patrol duty and 1,972 hit points of damage uh, after the object 430 with 2,114. If we look at the number of kills, obviously T30's at top, he's got six. Uh, then came uh, Fender Bender with um, two. Actually, he was after the standard B, he's got five. Yeah, the standard B who actually managed to kill him at the end. And when it came to base XP, he was top of the table, 1,118 base experience points and there must be a reason for that and I think it may be the sun assist that he managed to get. Let's have a look at detail report. Well, he fired 14 rounds, he got 5 direct hits and 5 penetration, 
and 15 splash. Damage of 4,518 hit points, all at more than 300 meters. He received two hits from the enemy, and both of them were penetrations. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, um, that's the standard B, um, because he's got that uh, auto reloader. Uh, it was going to be inevitable that he plonk in two shots very quickly to take him out of the game. Uh, 11 vehicles damaged, two destroyed, and he did do stun assist. Yes, 1,309 hit points off 18 stuns, and that's why he managed to get the ace tanker, because it's ad that added to the actual damage he did really did beef up his XP score. On a premium count, he earned 59,600 credits from that game alone. After repair and ammunition resupply and consumables, he took away 16,695 credits. He got six bonds for the game, and he also earned 1,677 XP, and there was no multiplier, so that's all the experience points he took away. He said it was a risky end game, mate in 15. Uh, well, risky, yes, but it, you have to look at it in balance. I, I always feel that uh, when you get to the end of a game like this, and you're only hunting for just one individual tank. It's worth actually being a propelled vehicle and actually getting underway and going after the enemy yourself. And uh, as I said in other battles I've done recently, where I've actually had an instrumental uh, part in winning the game for the team because I was on the move, because I spotted somebody that the other teammates wouldn't have spotted, and as a result, they managed to see who had actually killed me and then kill them in return, winning the game. So it does pay off being a propelled gun. You don't have to sit back at the, at the back of the map shooting. If you go mobile and actually help your teammates to take the cap or to find the enemy, last enemy, it sometimes pays off. And it certainly paid off for Fender Bender because once they've spotted the standard B, uh, then the other two could actually start hunting him proper uh, rather than just searching around aimlessly trying to find him. Because I'm sure he probably would have hidden to make sure that there was a draw rather than actually trying to kill them. But uh, yeah, it worked out in the end. So if you enjoyed that replay, please give it a like and do subscribe to our channel. And hopefully it'll be your replay that I'll be featuring in the next video.